Hey everyone, as usual, I'm Wes Gwamgwaposko, the Head Teacher Wisdom Center of Gesera. Uh, yes, uh, today we are going to look at different activities, uh, just like as usual, that uh, we make sure that at least we see that we move on well uh, in this period when you're at home. So please, uh, stay safe. Remember, the COVID is real. Yes, sanitize yourself, wash, wash your hands, okay? Keep our distance, yeah. And then be at home, work from home, stay home and do work. We send you, we are close to you, okay? So this time, yeah, we have come back with the next topic, which is specifically uh, cattle and goat keeping. Yes, so looking at cattle and goat keeping uh, in, a, in a sensible way or in a, a better way, we need to look at first uh, the pictures here. Yes, so looking at uh, the pictures, or in the pictures here you can see, uh, it can give you a view of, of animal keeping or rearing animals. You can see, yes, it's a boy here. He say we can call this a herdsman. You can see, looking after cattle. Yes, so uh, this gives us a picture of what we're going to look at this, in this lesson. Uh, we can move ahead and then uh, we specifically, what do we mean uh, by these terms? Got, uh, keeping goats and cattle. Yeah, keeping goats and cattle simply a means uh, is the act of rearing farm animals or livestock. Yes. Uh, and then uh, when we talk about uh, this term, we need to look at, we need to understand properly what's livestock, what's livestock or farming, then this will keep us uh, to move to the second step. Yes, so since you have defined it, yes, since we have defined the uh, goat keeping, goat and cattle keeping as the act of rearing animals or farm animals, which also called livestock, yes, you can look at these terms here. Uh, in simple terms, livestock. Livestock simply means the farm animals. Animals that you can rear or keep on your farm. Yes, they can be different animals. Talk about uh, cattle, talk about uh, goats, okay? A sheep, uh, name it. Those are all farm animals. So they can ask you mention any, uh, mention examples of farm animals. Simply mention any example of cattle. Yes, cows, bulls, okay? Uh, goat, goats, goat, sheep. Yes. And then uh, this can take us the second term here. We need to also know know uh, livestock farming. Livestock farming can also be called animal husbandry. Yes. Yeah, so simply livestock farming is the act of rearing animals, okay? And looked at the reasons why we, rear, why we rear animals. It can be for domestic purposes, for commercial purposes, all those. Yes, so uh, as we earlier talked about the farm animals, yes, you can see, they may include pigs, sheep, goats, cattle, and rabbits. Yeah, so the number of farm animals that are, we may look at, but for this time purposely, we are looking at goats and cattle. Yeah, so let us look at the common terms used in, goat, in cattle and goat keeping. Uh, yes, looking at first terms used in cattle keeping, yes, remember, we look at cattle simply refers to cows, bulls, heifer, bullocks, and calves. Yeah, so a collection of these, okay, gives us one name, cattle, that's a group, okay? Cattle can be a group of all these. Yes, then we can see, look at the second term in cattle keeping. Uh, look at a bull. So, a bull is a male cattle, okay? Yes. And then a cow is a female cattle, as simple as that. And then uh, we can look at a calf, okay? A young, a young one of a cow is called a calf. And then as you go ahead, you look at the next term as the bullocks. Bullocks, a male cattle which has not yet started to mate cows, okay? Is, we can call it a bullock. So bullocks are male cattle that have not yet reached time for mating the cows. Yeah, and then uh, the next term will be the heifers. So a heifer, okay, oh, it's a female cattle which is not yet given birth, or which has not yet given birth, okay? Yes, and then uh, uh, lastly will be the oxen. Oxen is a castrated bull, okay? Yes. Uh, we, we learned about castration. Can be simply refer to removal of the testicles from the male 
animals, there are different advantages for castration. For example, one can say that uh, it improves on the quality of breeds on the farm because those who have poor qualities, they won't be having the chance to mate uh, your animals. Yeah, and the farming of that, we shall look at that as we move on. And then, uh, yes, so we can check uh, on the on the next part, that's part B. Look at the terms used in goat keeping. Because we are handling cattle keeping and goat keeping at the same time for this purpose. Yes, uh, in goat keeping, you have uh, these terms like uh, a nanny goat. A nanny goat is a mature female goat, okay? Yes. Uh, and then uh, when you look at a uh, uh, bill goat, can be a mature male goat. A male goat that is mature, it's ready for mating. Or, or it has been producing. So a mature bill goat, mature goat can be called a bill goat. That's a male goat, that's mature. Then uh, we can look at uh, uh, next time there's a kid. A kid is a young one, or a young goat. A young goat is, a, is called a kid. That's why uh, giving birth to a kid, is, you don't say, you don't call it calving like in cows. I don't say giving birth. We simply say kidding. So kidding is the act of giving birth in goats. And then we can move to the next time that's the, uh, browsing. Browsing in animals can simply mean feeding on soft parts of a plant, okay? Immediately, uh, this can also happen like goats when you're feeding. Yes, it's going to go to their browsing. Then uh, tethering, uh, this is one of the systems of uh, rearing animals like goats and, and, uh, and, and, and cattle. So you can simply say that uh, tethering is a system of grazing where animals, or, or where an animal is tied on a peg, which can be called a stake, on a rope, just simply tethering. And this is, the, this is very common um, in, uh, in areas where, for example, somebody has one goat and has got his land, so you find that can either tie his goat or cattle on a peg. That is called tethering. Yes, so we can move next time, that is the heat period. Uh, in animals, okay, we simply look at heat period, which uh, is a period when an animal is ready to be mated, okay? So uh, if it's a uh, uh, heifer, it will be showing the signs, yes, uh, for mating. Uh, if it's a nanny goat, also will be showing the signs for mating. Then we say it's on, on heat period. Those ones I'll discuss more as we go on. And then, uh, uh, yes, the next point would be uh, winning. Yes, uh, uh, when after, after kidding or calving, yes, uh, at a given time you need to get, you need to make sure that your animals get used, okay, to different feeds. That is, this is called weaning. You will stop them from suckling the mother. So you can simply say, weaning is the introduction of kids, okay, to other foods in addition to breast milk. So this can work uh, in, in calves, in kids, even a baby. The mother can introduce, yes, other foods to the baby, uh, yes, in addition to breast milk. So the baby gets used to this food, and at the end they will stop uh, breastfeeding. Uh, yes, so we can move to the next uh, part. So for this time here, we can look at uh, properly the characteristics of a good cow shed or a goat, a goat shelter. Yes, remember you are looking at goats uh, and the cattle keeping. If you keep or uh, all three goats, we need to think uh, about uh, uh, the characteristics of a goat shelter or a cow shed. How should it look like to support the health uh, of your animals? Yes, look at these structures. Structure A here. This is a cow shed, okay? You can see the way it's constructed on a slanting surface, okay? Yes, this helps to drain, okay? Draining uh, water, let's say, waste from, from the cow shed, you see? Um, so a feeding place, okay? Where the cattle is reserved. And then uh, we can also uh, check, check on this side. Look at a goat shelter. Okay, yes, it's roofed properly, yes, no rain reaching the gods, yes, to preserve the healthy. Look at the, the surface, landing surface, also good to maintain hygiene of, of the shelter, okay, uh, okay. Then, uh, 
these structures simply can help us to look at the following. Yeah, so uh, we can simply start with a cow shed, okay, should have the following, okay, characteristics. A cow shed or a goat shelter, it should be fenced to avoid predators. Yes, once you fence uh, your shelter properly for your goats or cow shed, that means the predators won't easily uh, enter into the shed and uh, let's say harm your animals. And then uh, the floor, okay, yes, should be made in an inclined manner in order to drain easily. When you talk about inclined manner, we mean uh, inclined planes, not about inclined planes in uh, the first topics, that's, that's the simple machines. Remember, an inclined plane means a sloping surface. Means a sloping surface. Yes, so when uh, the goat shed or cow, the, the, goat, the cow shed or goat shelter is uh, having a slanting surface, this will help in draining the waste, which is very important. So keeping hygiene on your, uh, in your sheds, cow shed, it will be maintaining the healthy. Then uh, the next thing can be uh, the cow shed or the goat shelter should be should be roofed properly. Yes, look at the roofs here. Look at the goat shelter here. It's roofed properly in the way that uh, even if it rains, can't reach your goats. Check on a cow shelter here. When it rains, the cat is rich on your go on your cows, so they are safe. Yes, so good weather helps to maintain uh, the hygiene of your animals. And then. Uh, when you check uh, the next part here, it should have proper ventilation. In the ventilation here, we talk about uh, aeration, allowing air, enough air to circulate, yes, in the house or in the goat shelter or in the cow, in the, in the, in the goat shelter or the cow shed. Look here, look, uh, it's, it, it has got enough spaces to allow air to enter so the cow can suffocate. Check on the goats here. Also, you have enough spaces for air to enter so they cannot suffocate. Yes, this supports the health of the animals. So proper ventilation is very important in goats and cattle keeping. The next point here, it, we say that, uh, you can look at this point here, you see? It should have concrete rough floors, okay, that are easy to clean. Yes, when you make a floor for, yes, uh, for the goats, look here, should be rough, not smooth. Rough surfaces can be easy to clean than in the case they are Let's say, uh, talk of it in case maybe they are waste, they can easily drain, okay? Yes, so cleaning it becomes easy uh, in case this, the concrete is not all that smooth. So it should be rough surfaces, it's very important in cleaning. And then, uh, yeah, the next point I can say, uh, the gold shelter should have both uh, clean feeding and watering troughs. So, the feeding troughs, the watering troughs should be clean to preserve the health of these animals. And then, we can also say there should be another part reserved for cows. Yes, uh, in cattle keeping or goat keeping, we shouldn't just have one space where all cattle, uh, let's say goats, are just moving within the same place. You can reserve, okay, the part, yes, for the, for the, cow, for the cows, if it's for the gods, then reserve the part for the calves or for the kids. This is very important. Yes. And then uh, also we can look at uh, the isolation box. Uh, it should have an isolation box to accommodate animals that are, not, that are on treatment. If some animals get sick, you have to quarantine them, meaning isolate them, keep them in a separate yes, structure to avoid the spread of disease, okay? Yeah, that's why the disease you, you, you can hear, uh, terms like quarantine are very common, meaning in case somebody is suspected or is a suspect to, to end disease like the current disease, which is the COVID-19, you will find that uh, you have to be isolated, you have to be quarantined. Yes, and to quarantine the animal, it will be giving safety to other animals which are not yet sick. So you can treat those which are sick in isolation part or box. This is very important to avoid the spread of diseases. Yes, uh, next point says, there should also be a crush to be used for spraying the cows and the milking shed. 
Yes, a, a cutter crash simply can refer to a, an area reserved for, for a spraying, okay? It's that size to cows, like uh, disinfecting them, okay? It can be a space for disinfecting the cows, it can be a, or a milking shed. These are very important. The, a cutter crash, a crash can re, simply means a place reserved for treating sick animals, majorly spraying, okay? Yes. Uh, some people can even use cattle dips where animals can easily dip into the insecticides, okay? So, uh, or acaricides, in the case of cattle keeping, yes. And then um, for milking, this is called a milking shed. You can't just milk from the, 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 the cow shed, it's not good. Have a spare part for milking, that's very important uh, to avoid uh, contamination of your milk, okay? And then, uh, uh, this can take us simply, yes, to the breeds of cattle and goats. So look at cattle breeds and goat breeds, okay? Yeah, remember, last time we looked at the breeds, yes, of animals, and we said a breed simply means a group of animals with similar characteristics, okay? With the same features. That means that group, okay, yes, they have got similar identifications. They are animals with similar identifications. We can say it's a breed of animals, okay? Yes, so uh, we have majorly three main breeds of animals, like cattle or goats, in case of look where we are now. So you can see, in these three uh, breeds of animals, we can have the local breeds, which are also called indigenous breeds, okay? And then we have the foreign breeds or exotic breeds, yes. And uh, then uh, from there, we shall look, look at uh, the crossbreeds, okay? Uh, okay, uh, this can push us to the next part, uh, the local breeds here. Yes, uh, last time we talked of the local breeds and exotic breeds. Yeah, simply we said, if we talk of the local breeds, Okay, there are different terms, okay, which you should refer to this to make it easy for us to understand it. Yes, we can use terms like local breeds, okay? We can say, yes, local breeds. This is very simple to understand, okay? Yes, means they are simply found or got from our areas. So they originate from uh, the local environment or our areas. That's why we call them local breeds. Somebody can also call them native breeds, okay? They can also be called native breeds. Yes, the word native simply means originating from a given place. Yes, if we say uh, these are the natives of this place, it means these people are yes, They originate from here. They have, lived, they, are, they have been here for a long time. So you find that uh, they are produced from there, they, it's the place where they come from. So that's the origin, okay? So you can call them native breeds still in animals. We can also have another term meaning native breeds. We can also call them indigenous breeds, okay? Okay? Indigenous breeds. Yeah. So simply, when we are asked to define local breeds, okay, simply say uh, the animal. This you can simply say these are native breeds. As simple as that. One can simply say uh, these are indigenous breeds, or they are breeds originating from our areas. Simply like that. Yes, it's a local breed. Then, uh, yes, we look at other breeds of animals. Okay. Uh, simply, we can also have the one which is called the exotic breeds. Okay. Exotic breeds, yeah. So for exotic breeds, yeah, simply to understand them, these are breeds, okay, that are imported from uh, foreign countries, yes? That's why we also can get a name from there. We can call them that, uh, we can, you can also refer them to foreign breeds. What you can say? Yes, foreign breeds, okay? Somebody can also call them imported breeds. Yes.
uh, imported breads. That means we get them from uh, other countries, the foreign countries. Yeah, uh, so because they're not majorly found here, yeah, they, in our places you find that they are got or imported from other countries. Yes, so this gives us a name called imported breads. They are not natives, not found in this. Uh, localities, so they're just imported. Yes, uh, this is good. So the third one can, as we said, that uh, uh, we can also have the crossbreeds. Okay. Mm. Yeah, crossbreeds can be simply a product or result of of mating uh, the local breeds and the exotic breeds. Then you will get the crossbreeds. These crossbreeds simply, we can say, is a combination of the local and the exotic. So if, I, if you look at the, the characteristics of local breeds and then exotic breeds, so here will be an the outcome, okay, of the two. Yeah, and majorly these are very actually uh, strong in terms of, uh, let's say, resisting harsh climate, okay, resisting the tick-borne diseases. They are very good. So they are resistant to different conditions. So they are very good because you combine the local and the exotic features. Uh, we can also call them the hybrids, okay? That's also, yes, it's also uh, another way we can refer to them. So it's very important to note that. Yeah, so let us move this side and we check uh, on, on uh, each features for, features for each, uh, each breed. Yes, so looking at uh, local breeds at first, okay? So we say local breeds can be called indigenous breeds, or you can call them just uh, simply one can say native cattle, okay, or yes. So for this time, yes, we are moving ahead with breeds of cattle. Then we shall go to breeds of animal like goats later. Yes, so we are saying uh, these are cattle breeds that originate in our countries, okay, or from our countries. So these breeds originate from our countries, come from our countries, okay, yes. They have lived in our areas for a long time. Yes, so, uh, and then as we move here, we, before we look at examples, we need to look at uh, different characteristics of these breeds, of the local breeds, to understand them properly. Then from there, we shall, look, shall move to examples. Yeah, uh, these local breeds, we can say, they are, yes, I say they are native cattle that can withstand hostile climatic conditions. Simply, you can say, yes, they are resistant to harsh climate in this point. Yeah. And then now, uh, the next point you can say, they are also resistant to tropical diseases or tick-borne diseases. So you find that, uh, in the case, like uh, a tick bites these animals, you find that uh, they, take, yeah, they take long to, to fall sick. Though you have to maintain also, they are healthy. But uh, it's not like uh, the exotic breeds. For them, you find that uh, it's not all that easy. They, they need so much of, of vaccination. Uh, yes, those also have to do it uh, to the locked ones. But if you look at the exotic one, it's of too much. But here, they can resist uh, tick bone diseases. Okay, talk of hot water, red water, the East Coast fever. Yes, name it. Those are called tick bone diseases. Uh, then, still, we can say uh, the local breeds have long legs. Okay, and they can walk over longer distances looking for food and pasture. Uh, somebody like a huntsman can rear his lock breeds, if it's the lock cattle, from one village to another village, okay? Uh, uh, look, look at uh, nomadic pastoralism. We look at that in SST, yes, whereby somebody can move with his uh, cattle from one place to another place, okay, looking for pasture. Yes, this local breeds can stand for that. We stand for that. But look at for exotic, my friend, you have to keep them in, uh, let's say, in closed structures and provide feeds to them because they can't have the ability to withstand uh, such long distances. That's why it's an advantage to people less having uh, big chunks of land. Yes. Then uh, we can also say they have low productivity. Yeah, in these local breeds, as you said last time, this is an advantage to local breeds. You find that uh, it can easily have, like, maybe in case of milk production, you can easily have, like, a three to five liters. Yeah, you find it's of uh, low productivity, so it will be less milk. In terms of meat production, they also produce less meat. 
Okay. Yeah. But of good quality, remember that. So you can also simply have this as an advantage in this. And we can say for local breeds, produce quality milk, quality meat. Majorly, major, major, uh, they because of the way they feed, they are feeding on the lock, uh, feeds from the environment, yeah, which is very important. Okay. Uh, then they are also small in size. This is quite easy to uh, to identify looking at local breeds. Simply say they are small in size. Okay. I uh, compared to exotic breeds, and then. Uh, we can simply now check on the examples. Since we have looked at the, the, the features or characteristics of local breeds. For this time, uh, we can simply say that the local breeds, okay, of cattle, okay, may include uh, the small East African zebu, or simply one who can just say simply zeb cow, zeb bull, yes. We can have brown cattle, yes. Good, you can have uh, Sangala Kato or Sanga Kato. Uh, these are majorly from South Africa. Uh, then uh, uh, we can also actually have the uh, Long Horn Kato. Long Horn Kato, uh, these are the commonly known as Inyambo. Okay, yes, uh, Inyambo, ka Inyambo Kato or cows. Okay. Uh, simply in Kinyarwanda, yes, those who call them Inyambo. These ones are the ones which are very common in Rwanda. You go look at them down. Uh, in Uganda, they can be called Ankole Cat or Ankole Cows with long horns. Okay? We are going to look at different features of them. So, uh, looking at the Zebu Cattle, we can say for Zebu Cattle, uh, they are small in size. Okay? As we can see, the Zebu Cow here, look at its size here. Yes. It is small in size compared to those of the exotic breeds. Okay? Uh, they have short humps. Look at the hump here. It's not all that big, okay, or long. So they have short humps. And then uh, they are resistant to, the, uh, yes, are resistant to tick bone diseases. Yes, which is very important. Uh, and then uh, also we can say, they are resistant to harsh climate. These animals can easily be reared in a desert or same desert places, just in drought areas. You can easily keep them rare. These animals on the feeds are available than the, the, the exotic ones. So zebu cattle is an example of local breeds of cattle. And then uh, the next example here, okay, or before that, you can simply, yes, you can uh, look at uh, yeah, like a look at the next example. The long horned cattle. These are simply called Inyambo. The ones actually we've been talking about. Yes. Inyambo are uh, the ones for here in Rwanda, we call them Inyambo. And then those from uh, Uganda, they can call them, uh, we can refer them to Ankole cows or Ankole cattle. That's the common names known. Yes. And then uh, looking at their features or characteristics is very important. We can. Uh, Simply say that uh, they are fairly large in size. Yeah. Compared to the animals, which are very small, which are small in size, these long horned cattle, which are so called Inyambo in Rwanda specifically, you look at their size, they are fairly large in size. Not very huge, but the size is at least, yeah, admirable, minimum. Not all that very small. Okay? Some are large, it's fairly large. Then we can say they have long horns. Compared to zeb, for zeb cows, for them, they have short horns, like just check here, the horns of the zeb cow, very short. But for the local breeds like uh, uh, Inyambo in Rwanda, or Ankole cows in Uganda, you check on their horns. Very long horns. Yes? Uh, very long horns. Yeah. So they have long horns. Okay? This is, these, are, these are main features we can talk of the Nyambo cows. Oh, Nyambo cattle, we have Nyambo bulls, have the Nyambo bulls, the Nyambo cows. So, simply we can say Nyambo cattle. So, please, we can't forget this example. In case you ask to mention or talk about examples of, uh, of lock breeds of cattle in Rwanda, because it's very important, yes, to note. And then, this can take us to point three, 
or the third example of local breeds of cattle, we can talk about the Boran cattle. Uh, simply, these ones, they are large in size than the zebu. Okay? Yes, they have short horns. Okay? Yeah. They also have big humps. The zebons have small humps, short horns. So, maybe for these, short horns can be a similarity. Okay? The Boran and the, and the, and the zebu. Yes. So, uh, also we can say they produce good quality beef. These are or meat, the Burani cattle. They are also good for meat production. And then, looking at these features of Burani cattle, yes, we can simply look at this here specifically. Looking at this Burani cattle, you can see it's, there's a Burani bull. It can be an example of beef cattle, by the way, because you find it has got tender meat. They have got, they already put on more meat, yes. Compared to the Nyambo and the Bu and the and the and the the Zebu. Yeah. So these are so much good for meat production. Although as the, although the Nyambo they are good for milk and meat production, they have quality milk. That's why uh, the people wearing this car they will tell you, ah, this this milk from local breeds is very good. B basically because of the way they feed they feed. So that's the, what brings in the quality of milk. Um, but we should also look at exotic ones, we should look at more advantages because they will be having a quantity of milk. So uh, we can move. So this uh, properly gives us a view, a proper view of local breeds. So we talked of local breeds. Examples, we said we can have uh, the zebu cattle, okay? We can have inyambo, which are called ankole uh, cows. Uh, in, in case of Uganda, for Rwanda, we call them, we, we refer them to Nyambo cows or Nyambo cattle. Then, the third one is the Barani cattle. These are specifically examples of exotic breeds, no, sorry, sorry local breeds of cattle. Uh, yeah. So, uh, having looked at the exotic local breeds of cattle, uh, this can push us to the foreign breeds or the exotic breeds of cattle. It's very important. And this will be our last part. As we move, so let us check on the them and see. Uh, the exotic breeds of cattle, simply we can say that uh, these are a cattle that are imported from foreign countries. Yes? Yeah, we had different names. We said the foreign, the foreign cattle can be called exotic cattle. Yes? We can also refer them to imported cattle or imported breeds. Yeah, because they are got from foreign countries. Yes. And then uh, this can give us uh, a, a few problems on this. So when you want to look at uh, uh, the exotic breeds of cattle, it's better to look at it in two terms, majorly. Looking at those which are for milk and then, and then, uh, and then meat production. So majorly meaning, uh, if you look at their features, this animal shall say, they are good meat producers, the exotic breeds of cattle. And then they are also good milk producers. Okay, and in case you asked which animal should you rear for milk production, we can simply go for dairy cattle. Okay, so now uh, simply still looking at the exotic breeds, look at the size. If we talk of uh, local being small in size, the exotic they are large in size. Okay, uh, these exotic breeds of cattle uh, they are also good for uh, talk of uh, meat production, milk production, yeah. This is very important. They grow faster, yes, which is an advantage when you're looking at a local breeds of cattle. And then, uh, as we say, that uh, to look at these animals, the best way is looking at them in two terms of uh, meat and the meat production. So, look at examples of exotic breeds. Let us uh, look at uh, uh, first dairy cattle breeds. So, uh, dairy cattle breeds, these are majorly kept for milk production, okay? So, we can look at examples like uh, the Frisian, the Jersey, uh, look at the Ganzi, and the Aisha. These are the best ones for milk production. Yes, you can be asked uh, to give examples or to identify uh, animals or cattle that are good for milk production. They can ask you, yes, in case... Uh, You've got a, a dream 
of rearing your animals, okay? To rear animals or to rear cattle. Which breeds would you choose for milk production? Simply talk of the Frisian, Jersey, okay? Talk of Guernsey, and then the Aisha. These are very important in terms of milk production. Yeah, we can check, okay, one on one here and see. Uh, looking at the Frisian, simply say Frisian here, uh, they are originated from Holland, okay? Yes, this country. And then uh, talk of milk, you can say, uh, this, for these animals, they produce the largest amount of milk. Come, look, if you look at uh, the Frisian, the Guernsey, the Jersey, yes, the Aisha, um, among all these are uh, exotic breeds of cattle. The Frisian is number one in milk production. Actually, they are above 20 liters and above. You can find 36, okay, per day, liters per day. So it's very important. Yes, they are good milk producers. Uh, look at here. Let us check on a, 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 a picture here. You see a Frisian cow, okay? Uh, look, at, look at its udder. This can show, you can simply see the the kind of milk, the amount of milk producer. That's why we talk of this. We say it's the best milk producer. Uh, majorly 20 liters and above per day. Some can give like 36 liters of milk per day and above. So majorly we can say these cows, the Frisian cow, a Frisian cow is the best cow for milk production in case you are to rear animals for dairy purposes. And then uh, you can look at number two, look at Aisha. Let us look at the picture here. Yes, look at it here. If you see, uh, you want to compare, okay, the Aisha and, uh, and, and uh, the Frisian, you can see. The Frisian is large in size. Look at it. Look at the other, very large, meaning that it can give more milk, okay, compared to the, to the Aisha. But still, we are saying that the Aisha are also good for milk production. Of course, you can say also they have got big others, okay? So look at, uh, we can say this, this originate from Scotland, okay? Yes. And then uh, when you talk about their milk production, majorly 20 liters per day. When you talk of the Frisian, 20 and above, okay? Per day. Looking at the higher share, at least 20 liters. This is very good. Yeah, if you want to raise your cattle, this is very important. You can go for high share, you can go for Frisian. And then uh, another, another animal which is also good, the, the bread is the Gansi. The Gansi is also a very good, you see, yeah, in terms of milk production. Uh, this one's originate, okay, yeah, its origin is uh, the Gansi Island, okay, or maybe, oh, one can say at the coast of France. So, majorly from the country called the France, that's where most of the Gansi come from. Yes, originate from. That's why these are called foreign and cattle. If you want them in Rwanda, then you shall import them from um, such countries. Then uh, pro, uh, we can talk about, about milk production. They produce about uh, 17 liters of milk per day, which is also not bad. Okay? So you can check on a, on a Gans cow. This is so, so good. It's good in terms of milk production. And then uh, here we have uh, Jersey. Okay? Jersey cattle are also good, okay, in terms of milk production. Yes, when you compare with the guns, the guns majorly talk, talk of 17 liters of milk a day, but you come for the you come to the Jersey at least 14 liters of milk per day. Yeah, these ones come from in England or originate from England. Okay, you can see a Jersey cow. Yes, these are good. Also, in, term, yeah, in terms of feeding, they are so good. Yeah, so, yeah, yes, uh, you find that uh, for good milk production, look at its other. Yes, so this is uh, very important. Yes, we're looking at uh, animals like a uh, like goat, like, like uh, uh, dairy, dairy cattle. Okay, yes, so uh, having looked at a uh, at, uh, dairy production or dairy or cattle keeping in terms of, of, of dairy, dairy product, products, we can uh, still check on the other side of beef cattle, okay? Um, then, 
Uh, so beef cut majorly, we talk of beef cut, we talk of animals that are reared purposely for meat production. Uh, we talked of another breed here, we said, should be the, the jersey. Yes, jersey are also good for meat production. And here, majorly, jerseys are majorly got from, uh, from England, okay? And here, we also said that in terms of milk production, they produce 14 liters of milk per day, which is not bad, okay? Yeah, so these are also good for milk production. Check, look at a jazz bull, a jazz, sorry, a jazz cow. This is very important. Look at its udder, okay? Yeah, complete local breeds of three to five liters. So uh, this is good in case it rare is. That's why I find in terms in Rwanda these days they are encouraging families. Okay, the government encourages to encourages that they have the program of of one cow per family, which is the, which is so called the Jiringa uh, Munyarwanda. This is very important. Having this cow at home, uh, it's good. You can you can't you can't you can't easily stuff in case you you have you have uh, enough milk like this. This can be good for you can get terms and source of income. Yes, uh, very important. Um, this will take us to the end of the lesson. Uh, so, yes, uh, today, yes, we have looked at different uh, uh, activities in our lesson. We have looked at uh, goat breeds, uh, breeds of cattle, and then specifically, we went to the uh, breeds of cattle, okay? Yes, where we looked at those breeds which are for milk, those for meat production, and uh, this gives us a clear view of exotic breeds of cattle. Yes, so uh, we can end here for now, and then, uh, yes, we shall go on as we get together next time. Thank you.